hope, I, I, in some ways I feel like needs no introduction, but um, she's the author of the groundbreaking book Motherless Daughters, uh, which has spawned not just uh, a readership, but community and support groups and people who felt like they had not had a voice before um, finding it through Hope's courage and through her words. Um, and in that vein, also Motherless Mothers and Mother of My Mother. Um, and this book is really important, The Possibility <laughs> of Everything. This is a leap for hope, and she's going to speak about that tonight, um, sort of as a writer, as an artist, as a person, um, to put herself forward as a memoirist, and to kind of use her story as the, the center of something that she's um, asking us all to take part in and to, to try to understand. So I'm a big fan of the book. Um, I love Hope, and I'm mm -hmm. very honored that she's um, sort of initiating, she writes for uh, our event series and talking about writing. Thank you so much. That is such a beautiful introduction. Thank you all for being here tonight. This is. Um, Something that I, I've w been interested in for such a long time, your gathering of women in New York City. We do something similar now in Los Angeles based on your model here, so we're really grateful to um, have Kami and Nancy and, and the community that they've formed here to help us create our own community in Los Angeles where you can you know, um, throw, throw a rock on, on the street in Los Angeles and hit a screenwriter, but you really have to search <laughs> for a prose writer. So. We are, as some of you know, because some of you are people I've known in LA, um, we are small but mighty as a community of prose writers in Los Angeles. I'm, I'm here today to talk with you about um, the subject, writing about the extraordinary, um, based on the book, The Possibility of Everything, which was just released two weeks ago. It's um, a book that's, as Kami said, very, very close to my heart. It's my first book-length memoir. And um, so for me, this is a real labor of love. I feel like in many ways, this is the kind of writing that I went to graduate school to do and was waiting to do for a long time, and somehow got into writing much more journalistically oriented books, um, but now have come full circle with this one. But, I'm, but I, I am here to talk with you today about not just the book itself, but the writing of, of the book and the experience I had writing the book. Before this salon was titled Writing About the Extraordinary, we briefly called it Writing About the Unbelievable. And that was the name of a workshop that I taught in the Iowa Summer Writing Festival in 2008 for people who wanted to tell real life stories of experiences that other people had difficulty believing had really happened. And um, th the, this book that I wrote fit into that vein. And I was in deep in the writing of this book when I taught that course. This book is, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is the story of a journey that my husband and I took nine years ago that was, by most common standards, a story that for a number of people is, is fairly unbelievable. It's the story of taking our three-year-old daughter to indigenous Mayan healers in Belize to get rid of her troubling imaginary friend. And it's also the story of saving my marriage and completely changing my worldview in the process. And I think it, it is a story at times is so unbelievable that and initially I had planned to write it as a novel. When we went down to Belize in December of 2000, I had no idea that a book would come out of this journey. Uh, I went down there wholly focused on trying to help my daughter through what had become at that by that point a very difficult family situation. And um, I came back and started writing the story and I thought this is a crazy and wacky story. No one will ever believe that what happened to us down there really happened. Um, I was quite worried about my reputation as a serious nonfiction writer and, and what would readers and publishers think if I came out with, with this this tale. Um, I was in a writing group at the time in Los Angeles. I've been in several writing groups down there. And at the time, I was in a writing group that was mixed fiction, nonfiction. It was a fantastic group of writers. If I rattled off the names, you'd recognize a lot of them. And um, I submitted pages of this work as a novel. It was my first attempt at writing 
a, a long work of fiction. And there were people in the group with far more experience in, in fiction than I had. And they read, the, they read the pages and they said, wow, this is an interesting story, but you know, it's not really grabbing us, something's not really working. So I went back and when it was my time to submit, I reworked the pages and brought them back. The group said, this is better, but you know, it's still not really working. And um, by, that, that, by this time I had a, an infant, my, I had a second child, another daughter, who was a couple of months old and I just didn't have a lot of time to write. And my pages, it was my turn to come up again. And um, I was getting really frustrated with the feedback, but I didn't have a lot of time to do much about it and it was my turn to submit the pages and I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to do an experiment. I'm just going to change the pronouns. I'm going to take all the third person pronouns and flip them into the first person. I'm going to change she to I. I'm going to change her name to, to mine. And I'm just going to hand the pages in because that's really all I have time to do. I mean, literally, <laughs> I did a find and replace and, and just change. And I, brought, I, I sent the, the pages out, and everybody read them, and they came back to meet. We were meeting like at a Starbucks in Van Nuys, I think, because it was centrally located for everybody. And, the members of the group said, oh my god, what did you do to these pages? It's a completely different story. You're and I said, I said to them, um, I didn't do anything. I changed that to find and replace. I changed the pronouns. Um, I think what happened was that the intimacy of the first person and the urgency of nonfiction turned the book into a story that people suddenly wanted to read. And it, it, it seemed that the question, what happened to you next? that directed at the author was a much more compelling question than what happens to these characters on the next page. And, and so I knew then that if I was going to tell this story at all, I had to own it. I had to tell it as nonfiction. And I had to somehow find the courage to come forth with this undeniably wacky adventure that we had had through the rainforests of Central America. And this, this decision immediately raised two challenges of, you know, two matters of craft for me. Um, the first was how to tell this story in a way that was going to make this magical, mystical experience that we had had down in the rainforest come to life as a believable set of events. And also how to do it in a way that wasn't going to portray me as some kind of gullible new age lemming. I mean, <laughs> the kind of person who at the beginning of the book I regarded with skepticism and doubt. I cannot impress upon you what an unlikely candidate I was <laughs> for this kind of trip or this kind of transformation. <laughs> My husband was so into it and our marriage was really rocky at that point. This was the middle of the dot-com boom. He was working 90 plus hours a week. I was raising our daughter by herself with the help of a babysitter. And um, things were, you know, kind of dicey in our house. And he was so into this and all of this kind of alternative thinking, I really felt if I don't take this trip, I don't know if my marriage is going to survive. So I went down there more to try to help my marriage than going out there with any, out of any real deep conviction. Um, although some experiences leading up to our departure had led me to at least be willing to make the trip. <laughs>